Buying or selling? Capital. Good luck to you. Your fish stinks as a bird. What kind of rat would sell such filth? Back again, eh? It's free. Fair travels, friend. Back for a return visit. Have at it. Got yourself situated. Yep, yep. Keeping it together, Bree. Boring. Less again. Less again. Less again. Boring.
Did you find him? Did you find Peepa's papa? But, but, Peepa baby! But, Peepa baby, mine! Monster! Bawk, bawk, baby killer! Big Marge's spirit pecks and pecks at you. It causes no physical pain, but you can feel her beak pecking at your very soul. Peck, peck, peck! See the cook for stew, friend elf. Nah. 
You want an engraved invitation every time? You know the way in. Makes me sick to think that he's walking free with Magister blood on his hands. like blood and death. I wonder what I've stumbled upon.
rumpus crusted rat, cack sniffing whelp. Where you hiding, daddy's boy? Where you hiding? Snake called round a pile of filth, puddle of sick dog's piss. My apprentice! I loved him as my own! Spoiled, irreverent, arrogant, treacherous pustule! I loved him as my own! I want his head in my hands! I want his head in the dirt, sticky with worms, picked to the bones by buzzards! Bring it to me! Bring it to me! Head of the dog, Garvin! Garvin! Spoiled like green milk, like a stinking egg. His hands were bigger than his head. He wanted and wanted, but didn't know enough. Never enough. He'll got the business, same as he did me. Rat. Pig. Dog. <sighs> Maggot mouth lap dog. Filth fawning freak. This must be Garvin's mentor. Buried in a shallow grave, poor fellow. I'm ready. yourself. Doesn't it?
cornered them. He was... killed. Quite mercilessly by a young companion. A trader. The young man wanted to seize his business. Where is his head? Where is his heart? Speak! You've already heard my sad, sick tale. Garvin, my apprentice, my, my boy! I want his head in my hands. I want his head in the dirt, sticky with worms. Pick to the bones by bring it to me, bring it to me, head of the dog, Garvin, Garvin! Find him, feel his heart, squeeze it dry, squeeze it dead, bring the head, bring the head!
lucky find. Lucky find. Back off, pigeon! This is my bridge, and I don't suffer fools on it. The enormous, unusually red troll looms over you with his fists clenched threateningly. His expression is stern, yet you can see the tiniest twinkle in his intelligent eyes. Didn't hear me the first time, parrot! He smiles a jagged and magnanimous grin. Each pitchfork-pointed tooth seems to threaten you individually. We'll see. You want to cross my bridge? Well, I killed them. Nobody crosses my bridge for free, and they didn't pay the toll. Mind you, they hadn't tongues to bargain with, nor pockets for coin. 
But still, a troll must stand by his principles. Look at this wreck. No taxpayer coin has touched it in a hot century. He kicks the edge of the bridge, sending a sizeable chunk of rock flying perilously close to your eye. I'm the only thing standing between this bridge and the void. These days, everything is in decline. He rubs his leathery hands together with glee. <laughs> sure, sure. One regular prized bridge crossing coming right up. And I don't want to hear any whiny little baby noises about it either. Well, just for you, a discount of one gold piece. Pay up, Cuckoo! His eyes narrow to glinting slits, and a deep laugh shakes his whole frame. <laughs> there is one thing, the competition. Take out my competition, and I could waive the usual fee. A little magpie feather named Mog. He's not fit to be a bridge keeper. He took over the other bridge across, and he's too cheap. I can't compete with his ridiculous prices. That's a little non-committal, but I'll take what I can get around here. Grog drags a rough map in the dust of the bridge with one claw. He then spends an inordinate amount of time sketching a highly vulgar doodle of this marge he wants you to take care of. There. Now, for the moment, you'll need to back off. No pay, no stay.
The creature devours the corpses as a vulture devours carrion, stopping only as you approach. I have my freedom. You have your reward. Do you not recall my warning? He drained me. Let me feed. Oh, I cannot control the hunger. In life, I was a wizard. As close to a Madia as skin to flesh. In undeath, I am a lich. Source still streams through my bones like blood through veins. The creature continues its banquet. Blood spurts spray from the victim's flesh like lava from a volcano. The beast gorges on its meal. A sleuth of bears would make less of a bloody mess. Well, look at you, all noble. I can't promise that your sacrifice will fill my belly. But if it sates me, I won't seek more. It reaches out with its brittle fingers, and you hesitantly offer your hand. In an instant that feels like an eon, your source flows into the famished creature. Oh, refreshed and refilled. Oh, you won't need to worry about your precious innocence anymore. Join me at my reliquary. I will take my soul. You will take what remains.
Oh, hello there. A fine day it is. And the finest day for a wee saunter through the trees it is too. Not even any void woke could left to spoil it. Oh, just the best. Just the bee's knees, really. I've made more money today than in the last month combined. Thanks to a group of magisters who were in such a hurry they didn't have time to haggle. Some sorcerer who fled by earlier, and she paid a handsome toll too. Glory, what a marvellous day. Isn't a healthy business environment just wonderful? Grog and his pathetic bridge give me just the little kick of competition I need to improve my service. And increase my prices. Marge bats his eyelashes at you. You can't quite tell whether he's serious or not. Hey, what? After all we've been through together. Truly, who has the finer bridge here? You should be working on eliminating the weakest link. Which, in case it isn't crystal clear, is Grog. Whoa, not so fast. I do try to be nice about it and all that. But this bridge is Marge's business. Since it is such a fine day, I can let you pass at a discount if you entertain me with tales of valiant void woken battle. Otherwise, full price. Wide-eyed, Marge nods in appreciation at your tail. Now that is a story. For that, you can pass for a pittance. Over you go, and be sure to appreciate the bewitching views as you cross my magnificent bridge. up to these days. The spirit doesn't register your presence at all. She wrings her hand as she looks down on her poor, crushed corpse. Should have paid. Should have paid. Always pay. Mama said. Can't fool a troll. Got to pay the troll. Always pay. Should have paid. Bears ahead. Honey bears, looks like. You want some honey? Yeah, you can't have it. Bees are dead. Bees are dead. Bees are bees dead. Good thing too, cause, uh, honey. God, I think it's ours. The honey, bog off. The 
best honey ever. Makes a bear feel good. So bog off, Sal. The spirit of a young man stands before you. From his aura, you can tell that he was a sorcerer. You are a sorcerer, fleeing the Magisters in Driftwood. Hungry, you come upon a pair of honey bears. The bears do not attack, so you try to steal their honey, and ouch, you are stung to death by bees. Huge, hideous, void-woken bees. Stinging pain consumes you as the bees attack you, and the honey bears too. The bears survive, but are tainted. You die in agony. The bees die as bees must do after unleashing their stings. The honey bears eat the bees. I slowly won into your quivering flesh. He can do what he will. But one day his one true name I'll know, and so undo him. I see a cage, and in it, is that a demon? The master, the shadow, the crawler. He has 10,000 names, all true and cruel. In the near distance, you see a man, though shadows obscure his features. A faint, guttural chittering emanates from a cage before him.
This... this is him. He can help me. He can... Ugh. Losa's eyes suddenly fill with inky blackness. Grey veins appear beneath her skin. Walk away. She shakes her head. Her colour returns to normal. I'm running out of time. I think that man is Jehan, the demonologist. I need to talk to him. She throws up a salute and laughs low, but worry sparkles behind her eyes. She walks towards the mysterious figure, who turns towards her with narrowed eyes. Keep your distance. I recognize that particular shade of darkness in your eyes. Why do you seek me? You're Jehan, the demonologist. I heard you could help me. Please, I must be free of it. Jahan stands back from her, his body tense. He stares into her eyes a long while, saying nothing. I've heard about you, Losa. You're the amalgam too hideous to contemplate. One who has a demon coiled around her god-woken heart. Its grip grows stronger by the hour. Its voice and yours become ever more indistinguishable until, ultimately, it's your voice no longer. But not just yet. He walks toward her. They talk in low tones. Jahan's face is vivid, insistent. Losa's is set in a determined frown. Do as I say, Losa. Hurry now. It won't be long. They shake hands, Jahan clasping Losa's hand in both of his. You'll see. I'll be back before you know it. The Advocate doesn't stand a chance. Losa turns to you. So, we have a job. It's like this. Jahan can help us. He can teach us how to control more Source, just like that. All we need to do is a little favor for him. There's a place to the north called Blood Moon Island. I guess it's been more or less lost to a demonic presence for some time now. There's a fellow there, goes by the Advocate, and our new pal Jahan would like to see him taken care of. We take care of that, and Jahan helps us control more Source. And after that, he may even be able to help exercise what ails me. Sound good? Of course it does. She turns away before you have time to answer. Excuse me. You travel with Losa, do you not? We need to have a word, you and I.
I suppose I don't have to tell you her condition is... rather dire. You're no stranger, then, to her demon-wrought idiosyncrasies. The thing inside her is voracious. It's a testament to her strength that it hasn't long since consumed her whole. Perhaps that's because she's Godwoken, just like you are. The fact that she's Godwoken is what's saving her, but may also be the very thing that spells the world's doom. Do heed me when I say that under no circumstance must she be allowed to ascend to divinity. The demon, not she, would be a god. It would bring about the end of time and space and all creation as we know it. I say this to prepare you for the worst. I say this to prepare you for the kill may come to pass. You must be ready to be the death of Lusa. Should she come close to ascension, you may not hesitate. Stand ready to end her, even if it breaks your heart. Then practice the moment in your mind, for hesitation will mean annihilation. There may be more I can do for you. Come find me if you are interested in growing the source inside you. You may find that new strength will soon become essential. Maybe the river could be crossed on that. One day, his one true name I'll know, and so undo him. 